All right, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to start off by giving all praises, honor, and glory unto the Heavenly Father, His Son, whose name is Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rakakwadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, and peace and blessings to the hopeful elect. I'm the Brother Lawyer, and I teach with the Great Millstone Nashville Camp. Come back with a quick lesson. And this lesson will be entitled, The Nations Have Drunk of Her Wine, and Now They Are Mad. Uh, speaking from Jeremiah 51, in verse 7. This is a video from Weon. All right. And you see the title. It says Russian uh, Russia Ukraine war exposes EU's Russian gas dependency. So this is going into how the EU nations are scrambling. All right. Now, the verse uh, that I spoke about in Jeremiah 51 goes into Babylon, not ancient Babylon. Uh, the precept goes to Revelation 17 and 18. All right. Those chapters and, and, and various other uh, chapters. All right. So this Babylon, um, with this is it's America. All right. These nations are going to be mad at America because they have listened to America. All right. They have uh, put sanctions on Russia. You know, they they support Ukraine. Some of them don't, you know, but remember, uh America is the woman that rides on the beast, which I'm going to get scriptures. I already got scriptures on it. You know, America is the woman that controls the EU and, and, and NATO. That's why you had the headquarters here in America, you know. So basically, I'm going to play this video. I'm going to pause it here and there and I'm going to get some scriptures. But first, let me let me get to Jeremiah 17. It says Babylon had been a golden cup in the Lord's hand. Babylon is here in America, all right? I said, I'm not here in America. Uh, <laughs> is here, you know, America, all right? That made all the earth drunk. How was the earth drunken? From, from different philosophies, democracy, going into other nations, taking resources, you know, attempting to have coups in different lands, you know, overthrow the government. Why? So they can get the resources. The EU and NATO is not able to benefit from this war. All right. Because they're, they're look, Russian, Russian Ukraine war exposes EU's dependency, right? On Russian gas. So they've been using their gas this whole time. You know, many uh, uh, EU states have been using their uh, Russian gas. It's probably cheaper. You know, it's more uh, uh, it's, it's more dependable, you know? Anyway, I mean, not, not depend. yeah, dependable, my bad. It says, uh, that may all the earth drunken, the nations have drunken of our wine, therefore the nations are mad, all right? So this is going to be one thing that, that makes the nations mad, you know? Uh, you know, had Trump when Trump was in the office, he was talking crap <laughs> about uh, the EU, NATO nations, you know, and it's going to be much more. Just wait till this war fully kicks off and it's in, uh, uh, you know, uh, Europe's backyard again. And, you know, anyway, let's play this video. It's four minutes long. You know, I'm pausing here and there and end this uh, sit down before camp. Europe is in an energy crisis. The Russia-Ukraine war has exposed Europe's dependence on Russian gas. Germany has triggered phase two of its three-part emergency gas plan. Italy plans to stock up on gas and buy more coal for its power plants. Spain and Portugal have capped energy prices to protect people from inflation. As the crisis deepens, Europe is seeking alternative sources of energy. Russia used to supply 40% of Europe's gas. Now the EU is importing more from the United States and Norway. At the same time, the EU Commission President Ursula von der Leyen says it will not be a return to fossil fuels. There will not be a return to cheap fossil fuels, I think, and therefore alongside temporary and targeted support to vulnerable families and businesses, it is essential to help our economies and societies to adapt 
to the new conditions. Well, that was said during Friday's Brussels summit as the EU prepared to deal with more gas cuts from Russia. She spoke of the EU's plans going forward. We are providing through Repower EU resources of around about 300 billion euro to do three things. On one hand, to diversify our energy supply. Second pillar is to increase the energy efficiency. And the third pillar is the supply of our own, own green renewable energy. Other European leaders had different plans. A senior aide to Hungarian Prime Minister Viktor Orban say that sanctions on Russia needed to stop. He said while the sanctions hurt Russia, they survive. Europe, however, would end up in a bad way. Other leaders are thinking of ways to mitigate the effects of the energy crisis. Belgian Prime Minister had highlighted the need to act together. There is only one way to get through it, and that is all together. We must form an energy block. If we do it separately, we will all go down separately. So, they have their own uh, uh, ways of dealing with this gas uh, problem, you know, energy problem, you know. And so, like he said, you know, if they don't do this together, they're going to all go down, <laughs> You know, one by one. But we know that's what Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shah want. All right, Yahweh Salaki, uh that I was reading something, Salaki, but um, you know, the God of the Israelites. All right, their time is over. These Edomites, their time is over. All right. All these EU nations, Russia, right, they're all uh, uh of the same house, of the same family, all right. But first, let me, uh, actually, let me get, I don't want to get there yet. Let me go to this Matthew 12 and 26. It says, and if Satan cast out Satan, he is divided against himself. How shall then his kingdom stand? So we know that they're at the end of their, uh, their tenure. <laughs> like a person that, that, uh, that's written out of place. They're at the end of their stay. They're at the end of their rulership. And they're divided. They're all divided. Even the EU, NATO, they got their own separate plans. You know, well, my country's going to do this. And it's like, no, we, we, are, we are a party. You know, we're all together. And they're looking at each other like, no, nah, we, no, nah, man. You know, I'm, I'm for my country and you be for your country. You know? And then uh, I'm going to get this Galatians too. Because uh, I'm going to let this keep playing. I'm going to get that Galatians. All right? If we do it separately, we will all go down separately. So now the European Commission has to put into practice what we have been working on over the last months. Make sure we buy energy as a group. Make sure we use a price cap and make sure we plan together to get through that winter. Kremlin spokesperson Dmitry Peskov has said that Russia remains a reliable supplier. European leaders do not believe it already. There have been reductions in gas supplies from Moscow. Now the Nord Stream 1 pipeline is scheduled to undergo maintenance on the 11th of July. It will be switched off for 10 days. The EU fears Russia could keep it off longer to apply more pressure. Now they claim Russia is waging an economic war on Europe by cutting gas supplies. You see, that's why I'm going to get that Galatians 6, is because they was doing that to Russia. You know, different sanctions and so forth. Not cutting gas, but, you know, uh, certain things that they were doing. You know, now Russia is doing uh, the same thing to them, and, and they're, they're not benefiting from it. You know, it's hurting them. So this is at Galatians 6 and 7. It says, Be not deceived. The Most High is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. So these other nations, you know, uh, they reap the benefits of putting sanctions on Russia. You know, um, hurting their hurting their economy. Now Russia uh, is in the power to do them like that. Not uh, not in the power, but they have the power to do them like that. So they're reaping what they sow. All right, they are reaping what they sow, and, and they're going to reap what they have sown with America, with Babylon. All right, I'm gonna see. I think this is the end of the video. Like war in Europe by cutting gas supplies. Yeah, I believe this is it on the video. So 
I'm going to end it with that. Now let's go into uh, to some more scriptures and I'll close it out. So I'm going to exit off with this. Got the Galatians. Let's go to um, Revelation 17 and I'll end it with this. Revelation 17 and 15. It says, And he saith unto me, The waters which thou sawest, where the horse sitteth, are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. This horse is, is America. All right. It says, Upon the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast, these shall hate the whore. So these ten horns, Edo, uh, not Edo, goodness, EU, NATO nations, right? They're going to end up hating the whore, America, Babylon the Great. All right. They're going to get this war kicked off. They're already not benefiting from uh, the, the Russian Ukrainian war. Russia's cutting off their gas, their energy, you know. They're scrambling, trying to figure out how they're going to make it through the winter, which uh, over here in America, they're going to go through the same thing. You know, and the scriptures speak about, uh, it's like it, let me see, uh, pray that your flight be not in the winter. Let me see. I believe it's in Luke. No, it might be in Matthew. Let me see. Real quick. Matthew's Mount Salakia, Matthew uh, 24 and 20. And it reads, uh, these different versions, my bad. Yeah, I'm looking at all these different versions, see what they say. Yeah, I, I, I get it. Uh, I just get the international version. It says, pray that your flight will not take place in the winter or on the Sabbath day. So, A, you know, it's going to be a cold winter for, for all of us over here in America, not just over there in Europe. <clears throat> you know, if, if it's no power, you know, no running water, it's going to be rough, you know. And we pray that, you know, we be delivered or, or Jacob's trouble, all this happens in the summertime. Wintertime is a whole whole nother game. You know, in the freezing cold below temperatures, A hey, is 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 rough. You know, but anyway, let me let me finish this out. It says, verse 16, and the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast, these shall hate the whore, and shall make her desolate and naked, and shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire. So it's going to be those missiles during World War III. They're going to shoot missiles. They're going to shoot arrows upon Babylon the Great. All right. Verse 17, for the Most High had put in their hearts, in their minds to fulfill his will. Right. And what's that? To destroy this place and, and to agree and give their kingdom unto the beast until the words of the Most High shall be fulfilled. So they had given them, uh, their kingdoms over to this beast. Why? I mean, how? Uh, by drinking uh, the wine, you know, different philosophies, right? They have joined unto this beast, all right? In uh, verse 18, And the woman which thou sawest is that great city, which is America, the lady of kingdoms, like how it says in uh, Isaiah 45, you know, which reigneth over the kings of the earth. So America, man, that, that's straight up America. You know, you look at all these different, uh, uh, you know, these different military bases that are that are scattered around the world because because America reigns, but they're in the, they're, but their rulership is about to be broken. All right, giving all praises on their glory unto Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem Kakwadash, Shalom.